You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha, and today we welcome you to our final episode of our Halloween murder mystery special, Party to Death, The Confession. If you're tuning in today with us for the first time, we suggest that you backtrack to the first episode in this miniseries so that you can be introduced to the beginning plot and storyline and you can make a guess at who the killer will be. Remember, if you start here, there will be spoilers. Without further interruption, let us continue. Welcome to our conclusion of Party to Death. You've heard all the interrogations. Were you able to discover our killer? Detective Sanderson has. Tune in as she identifies our killer. Bring him in. It was hard to figure out, but in the end, everything points back to you. He wasn't the only one you wanted dead, though, was he? (laughs) It wasn't in my plans to kill Kirby. But if it hurt Caitlin even half as bad as I wanted to, well, then it was a little bit worth it, wasn't it? Tell me everything from the beginning. Detective, do you have a helpless friend? Why do you ask? Vicky is my helpless friend, and I am tired of being surrounded by helpless people. What exactly do you mean by that? Caitlin caused my dad a lot of trouble, you know. She claimed he made a lot of advances on her, when in reality, she called because her house had a roach infestation and she did not want that getting around. I mean, how embarrassing, right? So anyway, she diverted the attention to my dad and made it sound like he made a lot of advances towards her. The business took a dive. We were devastated. I mean, why do you think me and Toby are the only employees? It's funny how quick-tongued pretty girls get whatever they want. My dad was an honest working man, and in one lie, she destroyed him and embarrassed our whole family. The tipping point was when I found out what Caitlin did to Vicky. Vicky was so naive going to that party. She should have never believed that snake. I told her not to go. She didn't listen to me. And that's when I knew I had to get rid of her for everyone's sake, even for Kirby's sake. I could see that idiot was trying to make himself a better man by leaving her for Twyla. I thought he was growing up. It's a shame he had to be the only one to die. But you know, Caitlin, she ruins everything, even her own death. Go on, tell me more. Well, when Vicky called me about the party, and told me she had plans to put a laxative in Caitlin's drink. I was all about it. I was going to support my friend no matter what. What she didn't know is that I was going to help her just a bit more. When we got to the party, I waited for Toby to arrive. I excused myself to go to the bathroom and snuck out the bathroom window to the truck to get what I needed. I couldn't have it lead back to my dad, so I thought Toby might take the fall. The perfect opportunity came when Vicky threw me her bag and started vomiting, probably from the anxiety of what she was going to do to Caitlin. And Vicky freaks out about everything. I, that's why I had to help. I switched out the liquid laxative for the poison at that moment. It was so perfect. No one even knew. Then after that, it was like magic. Everything fell into place. I just didn't account that Caitlin would force Vicky to pour the drink so she could take it to Kirby. Apparently someone decided to be designated driver that night, which was unfortunate for Kirby. Even though it didn't work out as planned, I am pretty pleased with the outcome because I finally got Caitlin back. It's still a shame that we didn't get to see the blood roll out of her mouth and eyes. Oh well. (laughs) Jefferson! Just take him away. We're done here. Thank you for joining us for this shocking reveal. Did you guess correctly? Or did this dance with death have you two-stepping and second-guessing? This concludes our broadcast of Party to Death.